Use a little top rudder. The secondary effect of that control will shallow your bank angle, putting more of your lift in space and saving that altitude. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Final Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello Aviators, this is Jason Miller coming to you from Oshkosh 2021 and it's amazing to be here. That's a story for another day. Today we are talking about diversions and a diversion in flight is any time you cannot, for any reason, complete the flight to your destination and you have to divert to a different airport. Um, you essentially have to make a mini flight plan on the fly, so to speak, while you're up there in the airplane. Now, in today's world, most of us have GPS on board, or if you're using an EFB like ForeFlight, it's very easy. You just put in the new destination and it tells you everything you need to know. This is acceptable on check rides and it's definitely what you should do in the real world. But when you are learning the building blocks of that process, when you are training and learning how to divert, it's important that you understand the old school technique. And that's what I'm gonna go through here because it will make you a stronger pilot. So when you make this new flight plan, you essentially have to pick your destination. You have to get the true course to your destination. You have to correct that for winds and then convert it to a magnetic heading. You also have to estimate your ground speed. And then you have to be able to tell your CFI or some examiner how long it will take you to get there based on that ground speed. And in that time, how much fuel you're going to burn. That's a lot to do in the airplane. Let's just dive right in and I will show you some tips and tricks on how to get it done successfully. All right, you guys, let's go over a diversion, okay? So there's no, um, there's no magic to this if you're doing it on paper other than taking your time and dividing your attention. Okay, so the idea is we're going to anchor over a known point. In this case, we're anchored over Tracy Airport. Let's imagine the airport was shut down for some reason. We look down and there's airplanes crashed on all the runways. I don't know, whatever it is, right? There's animals, there's a herd of elk, and we can't get down there for some reason. So we have to divert. We're basically going to go through like a mini flight plan process right here in the airplane itself. And the only way to do that while holding your altitude and staying over your anchor point is to take it slow, one piece at a time. Now remember, if you have four flight or you have a GPS on board, you can just go direct to whatever, you know, just put the information into that digital device and you know instantly how long it's going to take you. All you have to do is figure out how much fuel you're going to burn uh, in that amount of time. Most examiners these days want you to understand the equipment on board and are tolerant of you doing that. So, it's, you know, do that on your check ride if you can. Uh, but when you're practicing, you know, we're here in the gym. We're trying to build good airmanship, good aeronautical skills. So I'm going to show you how to do this the way we used to do it back in the day and the way I think you should do it uh, the first few times that you practice it. Okay, so I've got my pencil. I've got all of my, my stuff, like I said, perfectly laid out here, and I'm anchored right here over Tracy Airport. So I'm gonna go into a pretty shallow bank. I wanna hold 3,500. I wanna divide my attention. I'm gonna tell Tracy Traffic that I'm here. Tracy Traffic, Skyhawk 494 Sierra Papa is circling over the top of the field, 3,500 practicing a diversion. Tracy? All right, now we're gonna divert to Byron Airport. Remember that I said one piece at a time. So I'm gonna kind of fly the airplane with my feet here a little bit. Okay, if there is one secret to this process, it is dividing your attention, just doing one little thing at a time. Um, and sometimes those things require two hands. So make sure you're organized going into this. Make sure you have a clipboard, you've got your plotter, your E6B, your chart, your chart supplement, everything's ready to go because you know trying to fold a chart while you're flying along can, can mean the difference between holding your altitude or not. Another thing I want to tell you is don't be afraid to fly with your feet, right? Like if you are in a bank and you start to climb, just push a little inside rudder. You'll get that overbanking tendency. You'll spill some of that vertical lift and the nose will come down. Um, the other way is true also. If you're descending too much, use a little top rudder. The, the secondary effect of that control will shallow your bank angle, putting more of your lift in space and saving that altitude. So it's not a permanent fix. You can touch the yoke if you need to, uh, but it's definitely a good way to quickly hold your altitude while you're dividing your attention and getting other stuff done. 
Now, one step at a time. I'm over Tracy, I'm gonna draw a line to Byron. So that's my first step, I look up, make sure my altitude's good, make sure I'm over my anchor point, and boom, draw the line, look up again. Right? That's dividing my attention. I'm still on my altitude. I'm still over my anchor point. I don't see any other aircraft. So now I need to get... Traffic to Hawk 1 under my gecko left down one one seven University. I need to get the distance. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the nautical side. Sometimes I've seen people put black electrical tape on the statute side here so they don't ever get the wrong one. And watch this. See how I'm descending, I mean climbing a little bit? I'll just push a little rudder to increase my bank angle. That'll bring the nose down a little bit. And then when I get back to my altitude, I can use a little opposite rudder to shallow that out. Start the climb again. If you have to touch the yoke, touch the yoke. By the way, that foot trick is just just that. It's a, it's a trick to help you sort of manage all there is for you to do. All right, let's go ahead and measure our line. The distance is, on a sectional, looks like nine nautical miles. Okay, looking up again, I'm gonna grab the yoke here for a second and just stabilize the aircraft. So we are gonna go nine nautical miles. Now, we have to get the true course. The plotter on there, we spin it around the way we know how to do it, and it looks like 315 is the true course. 315. Okay, then we look up again. We're going to keep track of all this. We're going to write it down. We're going to go 315 degrees. Now let's measure the distance. Remember that tip about the tape so that there's a nautical side and a sectional side to the plotter. Take a piece of black electrical tape and put it along the statute side of the plotter so that you don't make the mistake of, of the, using the wrong side in flight. Also remember, this is a sectional scale, so if you are using a terminal chart, you have to divide all those numbers by two. Uh, today, here, we're on a sectional, so it's going to be a little bit easier, but the distance from Tracy Municipal looks like 11, looks like... And looking up, see I'm starting to climb, and I'll just kick in a little rudder here to stop that, because I'm in the middle of measuring, and I'm loath to stop measuring. Looks like 12... 12 nautical miles, all right? See how that ended my climb right there? Now I can, when I'm done measuring here, I can grab the yoke again and just get the aircraft under control. I'm still over my anchor point, dividing my attention, which if there was one secret to this whole process, that is it. Now, when we planned the flight, we had a wind mark on the backside of the E6B, right? We had this wind mark. So you should leave that wind mark there because now in flight, all I have to do is put in 315 and put that wind mark right over my true airspeed of 105. So now I can see immediately it's going to be a three degree, three degree wind correction angle to the right and my new ground speed should be 100 knots. This is where the calculations come into play. If my ground speed is 100 knots, and I'm going 12 nautical miles, quantity over time. So 12 nautical miles is gonna take just over seven minutes, okay? So I should expect seven minutes. And if I'm burning 8.5 gallons of fuel in seven minutes, I will burn just about one gallon. You guys with me so far? So I just told the examiner which way we're flying. We need to convert that to magnetic. We said 315 with a two degree wind, three degree wind correction angle to the right. We said, yeah, three degree wind correction angle to the right. So 315, uh, 318 minus 13 for variation. East is least, west is best. Then we are going to go 318 minus 10 is 308, uh, minus three is 305. All right, we are ready to depart the anchor point. When we come around here again, we're still anchored over Tracy Airport. We are gonna start a timer, roll out on a heading of 305, and fly for, what did we say, nine minutes? So ground speed 100, we said it's just over seven minutes. All right, here comes 305. Make sure the mag compass and the heading indicator agree after all that turning. There it is, good. And I can tell you straight away, let's start our timer. Here, you can use this timer here. Oops, I just left it. There it is. Control starts, stops, and resets it. Select gets you to the, the part, you know, goes through the functions. But there we go, we just departed our anchor point, heading 310, and I can see visually that we're pointed right at Byron Airport. So all of that planning worked. We can now reset this to make sure it matches. Good. And we told the examiner how long it's going to take, how much fuel we're going to burn. It's not as easy as four flight or a GPS, but that's how you divert 
when you're using paper. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. You are now going to go out and practice that diversion technique. I know you're going to be a stronger pilot. I'm standing here in a field of classic airplanes, and uh, that is a classic technique that I just showed you. A huge thanks to you guys for watching this video. Make sure you stay up to date with everything we're doing. You can hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell. Uh, come to Facebook, find me on Instagram. Uh, the Finer Points puts out tons of content, and it is uh, in large part due to our sponsors. So thanks to the sponsors and also to the patrons. There's tons of bonus content on Patreon along with monthly Zoom calls with me and much, much more. You can find that at patreon.com slash learntfp. And if you were interested in the tips you saw here, our ground school app is just chock full of video flight lessons. If you haven't gotten your free three-day trial of ground school, make sure that you head over to learnthefinerpoints.com and grab that free trial. I'm Jason Miller, and until next time, be safe and fly your best. Thank you.